Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials finished down 10. NASDAQ up 57. S&P's up 12 and a half. We got a special guest out here today, folks, Car Karen Nolan. Karen is an attorney with Weatherington Hamilton in Tampa, Florida. Uh, Karen specializes, folks, in wills, trusts, asset protection, making sure that of all the work that you and your family have done, that it gets protected. Uh, Karen, welcome to TFNN. Hi. Hi, Tom. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. You know, of course, we're in the financial business. Uh, you are in the attorney in the law business. Uh, trust, wills, asset protection, right? So yes. if you can talk to us a bit, what do you see inside of your practice that all of us should have immediately? Where, where do we start? Well, I think first and foremost, um, one of the things that people should do is consider uh, estate planning documents that protect you during your lifetime. Um, estate planning, oftentimes we think about what happens to our assets after we pass and who we want them to go to. But, um, you know, if we become incapacitated or disabled, then um, we need someone that's going to be able to step in and take care of us and take care of our assets and make, sh make sure that um, they are utilizing our assets to take care of us. Yes, I got it. Okay, cool. So we're starting when we're alive. I like that. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, seriously, so in that aspect, do we start off with a trust? Let's say that we, whether it, you know, we have real estate and, you know, you may have sticks, stocks, and bonds. I mean, if they're in your IRA, that most of the time is taken care of. But w would we start off with making trust? Where would we start with this? Yes, yeah, so a trust is one way to plan for incapacity um, and also provide a direction on how you want your assets distributed after you pass. Another document is called the Durable Power of Attorney. Uh, and that document can allow someone to handle your assets for you um, and step in if you're not able to. Okay, now this, this is really cool. How do, okay, a Durable Power of Attorney. So mm -hmm. when, you, when you sign off on a Durable Power of Attorney, what is the good part about that and what would be the bad part about that? Well, good part about it is that you're nominating someone to step in. So if you become incapacitated, then it avoids a guardianship. So okay. um, it, a court process that uh, is very expensive. So that's the good part. Um, the downside could be is that you want to make sure the person that you nominate is someone you trust. Yes. Uh, because they are going to be handling your assets. And, and the same thing, um, if you nominate somebody for a trustee for your trust, um, you want somebody that's going to have, um, that you have a lot of confidence in that they're going to use your assets to take care of you. Right. Now, when the courts say that you're incapacitated, so let's say that, you know, we turn around and get a trustee or, you know, basically the power, durable power of attorney, how does it work that, let's say a picture that I say, hey, I'm still all right, and then my trustee say, well, I don't think you are all right. How does that work? Well, if, if uh, somebody were to file a guardianship um, uh, on you, there are uh, three individuals that would look at you and examine you and determine whether or not you're incapacitated or not so oh that's cool um, if, okay okay so, so if you're not then, <laughs> then then you would not be found incapacitated right so, i um, bet that comes up though right does that come up yeah i mean if there's an issue potentially um where there's fighting in between the family that that, right. that can occur and that that happens in sometimes when a guardianship has been filed so yes i've seen that and i do guardianships as well so i, I have seen that yeah you must see a lot of it no listen growing up i remember that we grew up and a lot of people had triple deckers in south boston and you never uh -huh. seen so many fights about a triple decker i mean it was sad <laughs> you know just inside families yeah. they get along and then all of a sudden one person dies and they were killing each other about a triple decker so it's yeah. sad yeah right. no that, right. that happens when money comes into play. It's, you know, not good. Yes. Um, okay, so that would be the first part that you'd start getting set up. And the estate planning aspect of it. So when, you, you know, mm -hmm. when you're talking with someone about estate planning, what else do you talk about, Karen? So we'll look at um, what their goals are. So if they have, um, you know, maybe a concern uh, about protecting their assets after they pass. Okay. Um, and may and maybe trying to, uh, let's say they have minor children and they want to make sure that their children are going to have funds to go to college and yes. they want to make sure their kids can go to college. 
um, or do go to college, the trust can provide that their child, you know, will get certain funds to be able to pay for college. And, right. you know, they may not get a distribution until they actually graduate, so it can encourage their children to finish. Um, so the trust actually gives you a lot of flexibility um, in putting extra little triggers in there to make sure that, you know, the, the proceeds are going to the kids the way that they would want them if they were still right. around. Now, when we talk asset protection, I'm going to mix and match something here because I know mm -hmm. I've seen in the past, right, that, you know, folks, you know, bottom line, let's picture that, you know, you're all lucky and then all of a sudden one of your child gets either sick, has something that you know that you're going to pass before the child's going to pass and that they need money for a long period of time. And that's when a, a trust for the child is really good, right? Because you can, you can, it, my understanding is that you can separate that so that the asset base of the parents will end up going to the child, but it won't get depleted before that. Would that be correct? If, you know, let's say the parents pass and the child's incapacitated, but, you know, of course, needs money to so that going forward. How, how does that, am I correct in that aspect? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the parents can set up a, a revocable trust during their life, and then they can have a trust um, going to the benefit of their child. So immediately upon their passing, their assets are going to be funding that child's trust. Right. And then the, tr the successor trustee is going to step in and then begin taking care of that child. Um, so it, it allows... One of the benef another benefit of a trust is it allows for a smooth transition um, from the passing of the parents to when the successor trustee steps in to, to distribute the assets. So there's a you know no delay like there can be sometimes with a probate. Sure, sure. That's that's a pretty neat part of the law that you're practicing. So how do you, how did you decide to practice a part of the law? Yes. Um, well, when I went to law school, um, I had a professor that was uh, practicing as well as uh, teaching, and so I became interested uh, through a lot of the real-world experience he brought to the classroom, and then I started interning uh, while I was in school, too, So, um, yeah. and I, I really enjoy this area. I met a lot of really great people, and um, it's, it's a really great uh, area of the law. So um, I also do special needs planning. So um, I also assist people who are disabled yeah. um, and need you know, special needs trust to, to help, you know, retain their benefits um, and make sure that they have money to help them. Um, Which is so their crucial. Life. I know. Yeah. You know, yes. it's it's because you're helping people every day, man. That's that's a good way to go to sleep. I like that. No. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because, well, you know, it's wild is that, you know, I talk about it a lot. None of us ever get taught anything about finance in high school and even in college. I mean, that's the reality. I mean, you know, college it's will give true. you some, but the reality is, is that, you know, you, everyone works hard and then all of a sudden, what, you can lose it overnight, right? Ex yes, exactly. So it's so important to, you know, not only look at your financial uh, planning, but to consider doing your estate planning too, to preserve those assets and make sure they go to who you want and they're going how you want. You gotta love it. Listen, folks, Karen's number, she's in Tampa, 813-225-1918. The website is whhlaw.com. Karen's number again, 813-225-1918. Karen, thank you so much. Look forward to having you again. Great education. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.